have Eva here. Let's talk about the two camera types, which is perspective and orthographic. So let me try to put it into layman's terms for you. If you're looking at something orthographic, you're going to be looking at it flat on. Okay, so let's let's take her somewhere where she's... Okay, so she, I'm looking at her straight on. And so if I wanted to see how this character is lining up, because I'm going to put a guitar in their hand or something, and I'm, I'm looking at the, uh, the whole character... Uh, then on orthographic, I'm seeing the flat scene. Uh, perspective is looking at it, say somebody's wearing eyeglasses and the camera's coming in from the side, and you're seeing behind their glasses, you're seeing that perspective. And as a character's face moves around, you're seeing, you're seeing side perspectives and things like that. Anytime you put the camera on orthographic, you're seeing a flat scene, and you can totally... You can totally stage your scene in orthographic mode and then you can render out any clip that way too. So there may be times when you find, especially with extreme close-ups, that the orthographic can, can sometimes capture things that you don't see in the same way. So it, it's just playing, playing with the view. Um, typically, 98% of the time, you're probably going to always be on perspective, which looks better, more realistic, and all of that. Okay, so this one is shot in perspective. Okay, and these are the angles, of course, that we had worked on previously. Okay, so there's the orthographic. Now, this is just me working with the camera and having worked with it in perspective view and then without touching a thing i popped over to orthographic view and i exported it and so this is the exact same movie as you just saw only now it's an orthographic view i could see this okay. being pretty useful for exporting out a portion of it for my projects what do you think I can sure get the the appearance of a camera coming in and the cameraman appears to be shooting from down low, shooting up at her. So I'm just going to make a clean slate right there so that now when I come over on the timeline, I can grab this gizmo. Okay, now we're coming in from down in the side. Now we're coming in from up above. Okay, you can give that illusion that the cameras is shooting downwards on her from above now she's looking down at the camera okay and then if I go ahead and and come back with uh, hit that f3 key hide that and now if I come in and I'm subtle with my eye motions I'm done with the head I just click the eyeballs not these these are going to resize her eyes if I want them resize, great. Okay, and I could just play with that a little bit. Now she's definitely looking down. And so you could get all kinds of perspectives here. All right, so here you can actually see this is the original Eva uh, that comes with the real illusion. Uh, Campus Hero characters. You can see how we've transformed the eyes and different eyebrows, uh, same hairstyle. We've gone in now and recolored the dress. So pretty much, I'm going to right click on the character and say remove object animation and all of the, uh, everything goes back to default. Okay. So I have a clean slate timeline here and I think the best thing to do to wrap up this camera is just simply now just work with it all right so even though you got a camera on as long as you're on frame zero about the only place that you can do something and not mess it up okay so here's our starting point
And I'm now going to go ahead in the timeline. And I am going to turn this on. And each time I uh, left click, it's green. If I right click, it's red. Here we go. I'm rolling my mouse. And I've done my first zoom. Awesome. And uh, now we'll go ahead and change the lane lens perspective. Okay, and you can see the keyframe there in the timeline. You can hit it and then hit it again, but don't double click it. And it'll show you what the keyframe is set at for the lens perspective. Okay, and now at this point I'm just going to go through the timeline a little ways and I'm developing a scene and so that's what I'm showing you here is, is uh, developing a camera scene and all along the way I'm going to customize the, the eye direction of the, uh, the eyes and the face. And then we'll render this into a finished clip so that you can see the results. Now with the screen recorder running, it's really stubborn to drag the character, so and there you can see that in one place I move the character when she's highlighted and it creates a transform key and on the same line there I unhighlight the character and it creates a second transform key So basically, as we discussed, you're moving down the timeline a little ways, and then you can continue to make the facial expressions. In this case, we're going to do a little more eye work. You notice I'm in the face editor, and I'm working within that screen. And I can just easily grab, left click and grab, drag the eyes where I want them. There we go. That's the result. And so as you can see, you can have, you know, all the camera angles in that. But you can also enhance your camera angles by having the actor have exactly the movements that you are trying to to achieve. We'll come back with the finish clip. And here we go. One more time. 
So this last segment will uh, work with B-roll footage and creating cameras to easily do that. Now before we start here, I'm just going to resize these new characters. And we'll just see if we can resize this, uh, get Joshua a little bit out of the scene. Okay, so now I have him in the scene but not and uh, these guys are going to light up and they start to hear the music that's going to be the point of this and we'll have some room scenes when i get all the other faces we'll have plenty of those to flip in for the whole room so just going to get their expression here so here we go take a little peek Yeah, how cute. And I like these guys. All right. I'm going to render that, and then that um, way you can see you know, how you can develop like a B-roll. That's not what I'm going to do. I'm going to B-roll this right into the movie. So let's look at the flexibility here since that's my plan. Um, I'll just go ahead and create a camera. And I'll set the camera switch key since I'm at the beginning of the timeline. Okay, so this will be our first camera here. And then um, I'm going to go back to preview. And I'm on frame zero and I'm in preview, so I'm now going to go ahead and add a camera. And on this camera, now that it's live, I'm going to go ahead and move back to the end of the timeline. Just get it. Okay. And I'm going to come in like this. About that far. Okay. And now I'm going to go back to the beginning of the timeline. Well, as long as I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and adjust this perspective. Since it's already at 150 by default at the beginning of the timeline, really what I wanted. All right, and we're going to take this right up to 200. Okay, so this... This is going to be a second option, and because I created a second camera, now I can just go and uh, export it. I'll put it on camera zero, and I'll export between this bar, and then I'll put it on camera one, and I'll export that out. That'll give me two two different versions of, of this, and uh, then I'll come back and show you what we got. Here's the first one. Just reversing the clip and cap cut. And then this was the uh, close up version. Zoom in. These are set at two times speed in cap cut. And then I slowed this one down just a bit. And I did add some eye blinks to a couple of the characters and worked a little bit of face puppet in too, um, just to make the example look a little better. Thanks for watching, guys. Come on back. We'll keep working on this. With Lesson 18, Character Creation.